You're listening to Let's Get Surety. Let me hear your bonding talk with Kat Shamapande. Hey everyone, it's Kat Shamapande. Welcome to this episode of Let's Get Surety. I've got with me my co-host Mark McCallum, CEO of NESPP. Hey Mark, thanks for being on. Absolutely, Kat. Glad to be back. I'm excited that we've got a group of NESPP past presidents here with us today to talk about their presidencies and just how they got into the surety industry and what they see coming down the pike in the future. Uh, So we've got to do that. Larry McMahon, Executive Vice President of Alliant Insurance Services Incorporated. Hey, Larry. Hi, Kat. How are you? Thanks for being on. I'm glad to be here. We also have Tom Padilla, Senior Vice President of Surety at Hub International Insurance Services in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Good morning. Thanks for being on. Glad to be here. And last but definitely not least, my fellow Mainer, Bob Shaw, President of Skilling Shaw and Associates Incorporated. Thanks for being on, Bob. Oh, thanks, Chris. Happy to be here. (laughs) So before we kind of talk about more, can you each tell me how you got into the surety industry? Larry, do you want to start? Seaboard Surety Company hired me in 1988, July 5th. How about you, Bob? Uh, Entirely by accident. Mm -hmm. Um. I was uh, in my last semester of college and um, had a few classes left, went to apply at uh, a company called Maine Bonding and Casualty at the time, which was uh, part of the Maryland, and a gentleman by the name of Dave Fawcett uh, interviewed me, and he asked if I would be interested in being in the, in the, in the bond department, and I said, savings bonds. And he said, no. And I said, are you offering me a job? He said, yes. I said, I'd absolutely love to be in the bond department. (laughs) (laughs) And that was the most fortunate uh, experience that I probably had in my entire career. That's terrific. What about you, Tom? So mine was a little different. I actually call it a setup rather than an accident. (laughs) Not long after after I got out of the service, uh, got offered a job with a family business. My grandfather started the company. And I got in on the insurance side, selling auto and homeowners and worked into commercial. And I decided I liked working with contractors. And we had a bond guy, a guy named Mike Sullivan that was with us and smartest guy I ever knew in the business. And I would go with him and he'd do the bonds, I'd do the insurance. And I got to sit next to him and suck up knowledge for about five years. For some reason, unbeknownst to me, he said, you need to go to this NASBP surety school. And so he sent me to level two. And I came home and the next thing he said is, do you ever think of running the surety department? Why would I do that? That's your job. He said, I just gave notice. I'm going back to the company side. Wow. And I recommended you for the job because you've been to surety school. And I went in to see my uncle and he says, you got till tomorrow morning or I got to find somebody. Who are your, who are so your I, teachers, Tom? Who were your teachers at that time? Jack Curtin was at that surety school. Uh, God, I'm trying to think going way back. He was a CPA. Byerly, Jim Byerly oh, was Byerly. running yes. at the school yeah, those days. Another past president. Um, Paul Hayden, remember Hayden was a teacher still there, yeah. but I took the final case from Jack Curtin and got yelled at and had the football <laughs> thrown at me. And wow! Did all of you attend surety school early in your careers? We, we uh, you're I I, one year. Yeah, I, I never attended surety school. My first experience with NASBP uh, surety school was in 1989 when um, uh, Steve Dunlap. Who was the uh, was the was the incoming president at the time? Had been to the executive committee meeting, and uh, they said, "You know, we should have a sales component as part of the school." Ah. So Steve comes back and goes, "Hey, how about you put together a sales component as part of the <laughs> bond school?" And that was my first introduction to the bond school. So we showed up in uh, the end of January of of eighty nine and uh, did the that, and that was my first introduction to Jack Curtin yeah. too. Um, and, uh, yeah, rolled, ro- rolled it out. So that, that was how I got into the bond school. Awesome. Larry, did you attend bond school or just- I did not. We no. Seaboard had our own training program for a uh. year, year of surety school and then two weeks of retraining. Mm-hmm. Then I had to go to surety school with these guys and learn the right way to do the bond business. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you started on the company side. What, what, was there something that where you, a point where you just decided I want to be on the other side, I want to be a bond producer? No, actually, I would have never left Seaboard unless Seaboard merged with US7G and uh-huh. then St. Paul. I would, I would still be there. Yeah, I, you probably would never leave. No, I would have definitely we, left. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> there's one person that we have in common here, Jack Warnock. That's correct. Uh-huh. Recruited us. That's correct. But back, so back, but you know, so the, Larry's Larry's a youngster compared to Tom and I. Although I, I am the oldest one of the trio here. 
by, true. A by, by like a couple, couple of months, months. True, couple of months. months. <laughs> and um, you know, so back back then, back in um, so that's oh shoot, this is Bobby, Bobby, yeah, yeah. So this, I'm just trying to think. So this is like 19. 19- 87? 87, yeah, 86, 87. 80, well, Benton was born in 86, so uh, no, this is like 1984. So back back then, the surety companies did not pay nearly as well as they pay today. <laughs> so you sh- the, the, whole, the whole premise back then was you'd go to work for the surety company for a while, and if you had a propensity or a possibility, you would go over to the agency side. Otherwise, you'd stay with the surety company. But if you wanted to make real money, which because most of us were getting paid like minimum wage at the time, um, <laughs> real money, you'd go to the agency side. So I was fortunate my second stint out to San Diego to uh, have Jack Warnock, who was uh, who ran the surety operation for the Robert F. Driver Company, which was an NASBP member. And Jack, I think at that point in time, he was the uh, maybe the, even the director of Southern California. I mean, and he was, also he, ran, he, he started SIO. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, so he was, I, I, was uh, I was one of his, I was his, company person for industrial indemnity and uh he, he needed he needed <laughs> needed somebody to, to to help him and so he he asked if uh, i'd i'd be willing to come over to the agency side then and that's so that's when i made my my change over but you would have never left unless jack hired you yeah I, yeah yeah exactly i was a company guy. yeah yep <laughs> no tom only has agency experience 100 percent agency experience 100 percent. never been on the company side never taken an accounting class in my life Never taken a college class in surety, just learned it, as they say, down and dirty on the street. Learned yeah. it from learned what I'm doing. Well, yeah. and I was lucky, as I say, fortunate enough to sit next to Mike. So five years of being in contractor meetings with him, and I basically just absorbed and listened and talked to the guy. And and he went back to the company side and eventually re- retired from merchants bonding. He's still in Phoenix, and actually have reached out and been in touch with him a little bit. But yeah, he just I just kind of got lucky to be next to somebody who knew so much about surety yeah. and uh, just learned it and absorbed it from him. And he set me on my way. I suppose this. Yeah. So then um, when did you decide, Hey, I really need to get more engaged beyond what I'm doing every day oh. in the industry and with any SPP. His name was Jack Curtin. Okay. <laughs> there you go. He recruited me. He not just recruited us. He actually brought us into the fold. We are Curtin crusaders. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Make, made you teach. Yeah, made you teach. Made me teach. Maybe tell us a little bit about Jack. Yeah, who he was, what he did. I might start crying. You want to cry first? No, uh, you, 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 you. So you <laughs> go ahead. <clears throat> so I went to uh, the mid-year meeting in uh, Hilton Head. Okay, and we had dinner together. Jack Curtin, his wife. You came in a little bit later. Uh, yeah, I was. I was not and in. He at goes, that Larry, point. what are you good at? I go, well, my dad was a cop, but he also teach, he taught college at Russell State's College. Yeah. He goes, you should be a teacher. I'm like, I don't know how to teach. What are you talking about? <laughs> but do you like government relations? I was a political science major. And he recruited, he physically recruited me and he said, you're going to do this next year. I'm like, what? Next year? Sure enough, that year was you, me, that we were auditing. Yeah, twenty two years ago. Temp, temp, yeah, and, then, and, then, and then there wasn't much auditing going no, on back then. It was kind of like it was, right. it was it was it was like when you taught the kids how to swim. You go to the end of the dock, Bro, it's deep end. It's like <laughs> okay, poof. You know, you, yeah. you know? But, yeah. but for those who didn't know, Jack, Jack was a producer around the Boston area. Yeah, um, and yeah, it, it, very very great. very yeah. active in NESPP. Yeah, and became a AG, past AGC president. AGC too. AGC. Yeah, past ABC. president. Yeah. Long before I believe right. my first annual meeting I ever went to was his. San Francisco. His meeting in San Francisco, yeah. and I didn't know him. Right. I was just getting in the business, and he, I actually met him. Well, I learned from him at surety school, but I didn't really get to know him. I actually met him at a government affairs meeting in D.C. and ended up sitting with him at a table. And so, he, we, I was chair of government relations. You were chair of government relations. You were chair. Of Later on, I was chair of government relations. After <laughs> professional and development. So he had a, a big, Curtin. big influence. Big influence. Was, so you could was, say he was a passionate individual uh, that, that'd be an uh, understatement <laughs> problem <laughs> <laughs> he, he jack kind of embraced life passionately so yeah, yeah, yeah but the yeah. but the you know the bond school was uh was his really baby. his baby yeah. and uh, you know sure the legendary sure, flying flying right. was his deal he, right well surety was his mistress yes the mistress of surety <laughs> yeah. called say it yeah. 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 she has he would say she has cared for us well and we must care for her, her. Yeah. he would be was right. very very good theater 
Yeah. And, good theater. Uh, and the theme to the school always, as we were taught, was you must do good theater. You must not just get up there and spew the knowledge. You must do good theater. And he was. I mean. He was one of the best. He was. Yeah. He was His sister was an actress. But he oh, was really? more of a. You know. Jane, Jane Curtin, Curtin from Saturday Night Live. Oh, okay. Saturday Live. Yeah. That's his sister. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. But he was, he was the actor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, 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 he could have had the gig. Yeah. But, yeah. But I had love, a huge I influence. loved him. Yeah. You love him? And once he got us in, oh, he was, yeah. He, he was, was just, the best. He was, yeah. So, yeah. you know, so that passion, he, he was very good at translating that passion to others. And he liked advocacy and education. And did you find those themes running throughout your being an activist in any SPP? I would say 100%. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, once you once you have the opportunity to get involved and in, in, uh, and you do participate, you really see the, the the value and the difference that it makes. I mean, uh, you know, honestly, we've we've all been really fortunate to uh, to have had long surety careers, and uh, the the importance of uh, NESBP, the the offerings, the products, and the relationships that we've established are just huge. I mean, it's uh, you know, Tracy's theme of better together is without a doubt so correct. I mean, there's not a, there's not a month that goes by that sometimes something happens in a, in my shop. Need a bond, have a question about some something someplace else in the country, right? Or or something just in general to be able to reach out to friends and knowledgeable people that are in, in either in that territory or right. you know, just for as a resource is who are your best friends? Fantastic. They're uh, here. They're here, yeah. They're here. Pretty much here, yeah. <laughs> so, Tom, you sound like you were kind of thrown right in the fire. I so literally was, yeah, just... How was that NESPP network for you as you were trying to develop So, honestly, I say this sincerely. I never would have made it or survived had I not been to that surety school. I still know people that were there when I was there as students. Um, and just the, the ability to pick up the phone and call people, like you say, or... Right. They need a license, or I've got this situation, which after 42 years, I still do that today. I might have to call, have you seen this situation today? Because there's always something new. And at that time, I mean, literally, there was one assistant and me. There was no other bond department. There was no mentor. There was nobody I could go to in my office and say, hey, how do I do this? Right. So I had to rely on other NESPP members and, and company people, affiliates, and that they helped pull me through, honestly. I would not uh -huh. have made it had I not had the associations. I would have probably just quit and left the business and gone and done something else at some point. Sounds like that's pretty important for any young producer going in to establish kind of those relationships, uh, even outside their agency, to know where to go to get that mentoring, whether it's informal or formal. So would you well, agree, Larry? Alliance, Alliance, a national company, right? But back in the day, Robert F. Driver Company... Yeah, you, just Celia and Shaw, Luhan. Yeah. We were national brokers because we had friends in other parts of the country. Took yeah. care of them. Uh, took care of us. Yeah, absolutely, it gives us you know it gives us the resource to compete with anybody, um, and 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 also provide huge benefit to our customers. I mean, with uh, again the, the the kind of information, the knowledge, uh, to be able to know about bond forms in North Carolina or something like that. If I'm if I'm a small agent in in maine and i don't participate or have this kind of knowledge i can't i can't serve my customers the way they, they should be served right and right. The, the ability to reach out even so all of us are now part of bigger organizations a little bit bigger with the sales and mergers and everything but yet we don't now say i won't help larry because he's a lion or i won't help bot we still i call my nasbp friends first who now might work for a different broker or they might be with hub now but right it's still that type of deal. You know, it's been said when you talk about the surety school that there's not another industry in the world that will go up there for free, give their time, and enthusiastically train their own competitors They're training and then their help them later. Yeah. And that's just, it doesn't matter now whether our cards say Luhan anymore or Hub or Lion or whoever we are. It's still the NASBP brotherhood and sisterhood, I think, still transcends that. It's still a stronger bond. Well, it, it clearly, um, that kind of level of support sounds like it may have been a catalyst for you to want to give back through your own leadership activities. And uh, Bob, would you say that was true for you? Oh, I, I, absolutely. I mean, uh, been, I've been very fortunate to have some good mentors in the business. 
And uh, all you need to do is see that and be part of that. And uh, you, you want to pass that along. I mean, you, you want to be able to perpetuate what we all have here and what we've been able to experience. Yeah, it's, that, that, so that's, that's, that's back, very exciting. Take away. It sounds like you did, like to take it on the road. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, if, right? if that's what it takes, yeah. you have to get the tour bus out. That's, that's what you do. You'll, you'll do so, it. You exactly. see, your grandfather's right there, your great-grandfather. Well, <laughs> as, 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 as our good friend Matt Cashin, Cashin told say. me one time, he said, you know, he said, he said the reason that uh, I'm happy to come to Bond School and to teach people they may be competing against, because I want to be able to have people that are as knowledgeable as me and have good competitors to be able to have an even playing field that way. A yeah, professional, professional experience. Exactly. Right. right. Well, um, Larry, uh, was your theme during your presidency? Uh, mentoring. Ha- mentoring. Sounds like it's, it's a kind of a future. theme of our what we've been talking about, right? So if we didn't have... Cashin or Curtin or Warnock, where are we at? Or Sullivan? Sullivan. Where are we at? We had to have our yeah. mentors. Yeah, mentors. Everyone needs a mentor. Several. Several. These, yeah, yeah, these younger help. kids today need like five, six, seven. <laughs> we needed one. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, and Tom, I know uh, service has always been big uh, to you when you were president. Uh, not only was service to the industry, but to others as well. Yeah. Important, uh, important point. Absolutely. I mean, make a difference was my theme, and I mean, I was raised that, you know, the gifts given to you, whether whether you believe they came to you from God or from family or whatever, weren't yours to keep. And I come from a family. My mother was a teacher. My grandfather. And had I not gone into this, I think I might have been there. But it was always. You know, your knowledge and things are not there to hoard. They're there to spread around and make everybody stronger around you, and it it just makes better. And yeah, so, so your dad, though, your dad's service to our country. You know, my dad, I, yeah, the, the that part of service has always been important to me because, you know, I remember at a very young age, the, the biggest thing I remember about my father, at three years old, I could sing the Marine hymn when I got out of the bathtub <laughs> and was drying off. My army. So it was, yeah. you know, and it was about service to country, service yep. to people around you, God. to the community, give back wherever. So this is just a, another way, if you will, of service, giving back. And and I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's come back a hundred, probably a thousand times without a, a doubt. Times. And you just give it again and it comes back more. Well, that's emblematic for what you do for your clients, right? Uh, service, mentoring, going on the road when you need to, to serve, you know, serve them. I mean, you think those are all true statements? Very, very true, right? Would you agree? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. And Bob, when yeah. you were president, you did go on the road. I did go on he the road. He had the road show. I was very fortunate you have to have the, <laughs> have the road show. So that was, uh, we'd, uh, w- with, uh, with the staff from Lynn Cook, we had uh, developed the Guaranteed to, to succeed, succeed program, which was uh, to give our membership some more tools and, uh, and opportunities to promote the surety product and to, and to help, their, help their customers. So it was really a lot of fun. And uh, with, with you, Kat, and Mark, and uh, we, we made some stops around the country. <laughs> and uh, we're able to spend some time with some of our members, some of the surety companies folks, some of the affiliates, and uh, and, and talk about what it is w- that we do and, uh, and kind I, of roll I, out the program. It was nice. I went to the L.A. one. It was, how many people were there? The place was jammed. It was jammed. It was yeah. jammed. Yeah. It was, yeah. Well, and it fit in so well with your theme, too. That's right. Keep surety weird. <laughs> oh, oh no, I'm sorry. That was that was oh, my that was my, that was my backup. That was my backup. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's that's correct. Yeah. Sell more bonds. Yeah. Sell, Sell bonds. more bonds. Sell more bonds. And yeah, I think that uh, no, it was it was it was uh, it was a tremendous experience and such. I, I feel unbelievably fortunate to have yeah, Kat, had you, that time. You, you feel the energy, right? Yeah. You, I mean, like, yeah. I mean, the AGC is a great place. You work there, but the energy. I mean, the energy, like yeah. surety school, like I get uplifted. Like yeah. I get back, I'm on a high for 10 days. Yeah, that, that, that's, that was one thing. So, you know, in, uh, in being in the Northeast at the end of January, you're, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like the doldrums and I'm kind of, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm semi hibernating. I'd go to bond school and I'd come back and I'd be jacked up. And uh, <laughs> my wife, Kelly, would go, well, you know, she, and she, she would recognize that. She said, you know, it's so good for you because getting out the door to get on the plane and go to Houston, it's like, ah, oh, I got so much stuff to do. She goes, go go and i'd come back and be like yes and uh, yeah. you know just you just feed off all these guys here all the, the all, all the instructors but then the younger people that are coming up to in their excitement and enthusiasm and like larry and tom said to be able to mentor them and share information with them you know and see them starting to grow right. in their careers was 
And yeah. you see them in, they're in that room right there. You see them here. So how here. many people have come up to both of you, to any of us, said, you were my instructor in Houston in 19-something <laughs> or well, I um, 2000s. I was in San Diego this year. I was, yeah. you know, and, and just ton, it just happens again and again. And they're not, a lot of those that say that are not very young anymore. <laughs> They've been <laughs> right. in it for, you That's know, right. I've been in it for 15 years, but you were my instructor. Yeah. And made an impact. And there's, well, wow. I mean, that's just nothing. Or the phone rings and they'll call you. I was in your class two years ago. I have a tough question. Can you help me? And so, it's, it's really fulfilling. Yeah. So clearly the relationship building, those connections, they're timeless, right? But have you seen things evolve in the industry and with NESPP since your presidencies? Anything comes to mind, Tom? Yeah. I mean, so much has evolved. I mean, like they say, the more the more you change, the more you stay the same. But I mean, even even our presentations and how we have to do the surety school, we've modernized, we've brought things forward. We've had to bring in a little bit of technology. Technology has certainly made us all change. And I'm a I'm a non tech guy, but I mean, it's the advent of the speed at which the business runs. You don't mail a submission anymore and wait for somebody and then get on the phone. So, you know, the basic principles have they changed? Yeah, some Pretty people have maybe stretched them a little, but the basic principles have never changed. But the way business moves, the speed at which it moves, and the expectations of people, that's certainly changed. changed. Yeah. Certainly changed. Yeah, and in, in the last two years with the, uh, the 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 pandemic and the hiatus, you know, things like dealing uh, dealing and figuring out electronic bonding and uh, and and how we can maybe move our product forward a little bit more and, and get to where we need to be. I mean, I've, you, you see that happening now, and it's, and it's really important. So I have two kids in the business now, Mark. Well, oh, two, wow. One at CNA Surety and one at Alliant. And if I didn't have mentors like this guy and that guy. Like Matt Cashin, oh, Cashin Spence, Spence Miller. Spence Miller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that we would be nowhere. We would be nowhere without these guys. And there are great people out there. Now, now, who's mentoring your uh, your children? Not me. Because probably not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's not going to go over real well, right? Mary Grace already sent a picture this morning. You, yeah, I so said, yeah. his daughter is now my underwriter. Oh, wow. really? Only one of wow. my largest accounts at a surety. She just moved wow. to Colorado. Oh, wow. And it was interesting. When she was looking at taking the position, she called me and said, you're in that region. And so it was even, and I've literally known her since she was a kid. Right. And but had that ability, right, to reach out yeah. and get a perspective. But, you know, it's, this is Mary McMahon. Okay. Your, your family. <laughs> your family with the last, you know, it, it, it's, it's automatic. Wow. Isn't that cool? And you have two it boys in the cool. business. I have one boy in the business. Well. Yes. yes. But yes. yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it, it, it's a very, it's a great opportunity. It's Good the, place to be. It's the best opportunity ever. Yes. So what? How would you pitch it to somebody coming out of college who's going? Gosh, I, I don't know what direction, but I think I like business and I like being with people. What can I do? So uh, we had a line at Seaboard called we, "We Make Contractors Money, Cash." All right, Cash. And if you need a new set of tires, need a new car. Need a new car for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do good, be good. Oh no, right? Better than good. Better than good. Oh, I like that. You know, I, I think that uh, if you if you if you want a job where every day is different or career where every yeah. day is different, um, and to be able to use your business degree or your writing skills or your social skills or any of those sort of things, uh, ironically, this this has all those attributes incorporated. Yeah, yeah, and you can you can take it in a lot of different directions. I mean, there's you know some people aren't. Some people love the technology, and there's, we, we certainly need people to embrace that. And you have some people that really like to go out and knock on doors and be more social. I mean, there's a lot of directions that you can go. Well, what Tom said something earlier about, you know, every day is something different, something new. Every day is new. I would think that would be pretty enticing well, to and people. And when I talk to somebody, of course, remember, again, I only come from the producer side, but my whole is, yeah, you're going to get to go out and see things that are, every project you're going to see, every person you're, a lot of unique experiences and a lot of things you're going to get to do. But I also say, look, I'm going to be very honest with you. And if you're coming out of college, especially with a degree, said so you're going to work harder for at least four to six, maybe eight years, twice as hard as your peers. So, but if you do it right, if you love this job and embrace it, within that period of time, 
income wise, freedom wise. I mean, look where we're sitting in Palm Desert and we're at work. I mean, and so that's my pitch to them is if you really want to, if you're willing to invest, right? this is a business and a career and a, and a family that will take care of you the rest of your life. Maybe uh, tell us a little bit about what it's like when you know that you're helping a client and you see that success over time. What does that feel like? Well, I think you said it many years. When you drive down a job site mm. and you see we bonded that job or I, that building was built by our yeah. Wow. It's yeah. amazing. It's uh it, it's it's really a great feeling. So today we had David Jean talking about continuity and that sort of thing. That's that's been a huge thing as we're all aging our the a lot of the a lot of our customers you're that we're aging. coming up with not how <laughs> not, not you. You're, you're, the, you're the millennial. You know, a lot of our customers so they, they, they were at a point saying, Well, you know, what what should we do? And they would look look to us for guidance. And I yeah. so I have a mechanical contractor. And the same sort of thing. He's right, right around the same, actually the same age I am. And we tried to figure it out, tried to figure it out. And he was looking at something tradition. And the ESOP world has kind of exploded over the last five, six years or so. Right. And so we figured out how to put that together for him. And uh, so two years ago, we could get the annual financial information. He said, he said, Bob said, I got to tell you, he said, uh, you know, what you did and the information that you provided me and the connections you put together. We talked about, Dave talked about his five C's, right? All the other the uh, CPAs, the attorneys, he said, those people and what we've done have made a difference in my life and the life of everybody in my business. He said, it never would have happened if we hadn't tried that. And, you know, not a rocket science, but but those are the kind of resources that you get here and then you can bring back into our workspace and, and make a difference. How many people have you made millionaires being a bond guy? Uh, well, yeah, well, and even the the big guys are fun. I'll say that. But if you want to know when I've had the most satisfaction, honest in Mom my life pops. is is getting some small contractor, whether it be an emerging minority, male, female, whatever. I do a lot with Native American. Getting them when nobody, in a lot of cases, understands who they are, even what they do, their model, and it might be their first bond at three hundred thousand, or maybe now they've done a three hundred and you get them a million dollar bond. But when they come back and they thank you, I mean, I came from the insurance side of the world, and trust me, that nobody says thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you cost me money. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's the necessary evil component, right? But when they <laughs> get a bond, it's always thank you. And, you know, I'm into second and third generation with someone, and when they introduce you and say, this is someone yeah. who's going to be important to your career and continued success, you know, because they wrote my first bond in the SBA 30 years ago. Or they helped me out when I just needed this, and nobody else had the, the faith or the confidence or the ability f- to figure out how to get it done, took the time to understand it. The big deals are fun and make you the money, but those are the best. Sounds pretty satisfying. It's very satisfying. And it sounds very. like you create a, a legacy of success for others. So, so yeah. we hope. Pretty good career. We hope. Yeah. We hope. Yeah. yeah. Feel very fortunate. I just want to thank you guys for being on with us today. It's been awesome talking to you about your presidencies and about the surety industry as a whole. I Hopefully, we can all have you back again sometime. Look forward to it. If we're allowed. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully, it won't be yeah. three years till we're together again. And yes. hopefully, hopefully we, uh, we did something that, that some people can take away and realize the passion we have for this industry and make them, make them take a look. This is a great place. It's a great and family to be part of. Yeah. Great family. Yeah. And if anyone wants to get an up-close glimpse of that passion, they should come to Surety School, which these guys have mentioned. You might Absolutely. see some of them teaching 30, there. 22, 20. Come to Surety School. Come that's to a, a regional a meeting. Years. Come to a government yeah. affairs. Come to government affairs. Come to D.C. Fly if you in. think you like Fly politics. In. Even if you don't want to do, get on Automate. Just get involved, and I guarantee you the bug will bite you, and you will be hooked. You've been listening to Let's Get Surety. Let me hear your bonding talk. Brought to you by the National Association of Surety Bond Producers. For more information about the NASBP and its members, visit nasbp.org.